Did we fall in love Or was it just the wine From Hong Kong, in Hong Kong for the last generation, I made you have a choice. You'll be a Republican candidate I did for governor. Not have sexual relations. And I realized that this is something Ms. Lewinsky. We're not going to be able to solve our problems if we get distracted by sideshows and carnival barbers. One Republican, one Democrat, and you discuss the issues that matter in today's local, state, national, and global politics. Hosted by Steve Hickson, with co-hosts John Stanberry and Franklin Chancy. This is Backfire. Hey, good morning, Clevelanders. We've got Steve Dobal Hickson back in the studio this morning. Glad well, to have you back. Welcome back to Backfire. With John Stanberry and Franklin Chancy in here. Good morning, guys. Hey, morning. Steve. Hey, uh, before we get started, I want to, uh, you know, I've, I have uh, had a passing in my family, my uh, Stepdad passed away, Carl Green, who's been with me since I was about 15, so he was my dad to me. Anyway, today was his birthday. He passed away the other day, but today he would have been 91. I just want to let everybody know that Carl, would, if he'd lived a few more days, would have made it to 91 today, but he had a great life, and uh, he'll be sadly missed. Anyway, guys, uh, you know, this storm is uh, just tearing up the news right now and it's a terrible terrible thing you know this thing was probably i guess it was, they're talking about it's the most powerful They've tornado to a category five yeah ef five and uh, it's the most powerful storm 300 mile an hour winds or something i mean can you imagine 300 mile an hour winds at anything yeah i saw a, a photograph yesterday of what appeared to be a boulder about eight feet around that was sitting on top of a car and it obviously had flown through the air and and, and just incredible force uh, uh terrifying if you had to happen to be there i mean you know we had a horrific storm here we thought and we had lives lost and so forth but it wasn't i mean really it well, was the, the eye apparently or the path was half a mile wide uh, there was a story of a woman that, because you see that and you go, well, gosh, if I lived out there, I'd have a shelter. This woman was in a shelter. It cracked the shelter open. Now, she survived, but it literally cracked her underground shelter open. Yeah, mm -hmm. more, more than 1,000 homes totally destroyed. I think I saw eight to 10,000 more with serious structural damage. I mean, just. And they had a storm there, uh, what, 98 or something, a bad storm there. It was there. Category Town. 5. It was yeah. the worst up to this, you know, since yeah. this one, before this one. You know, I, 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 these storm shelters are going to get more popular, I believe. I mean, it's amazing to me that uh, these well, there's tornadoes. There's a story about a mother that took her infant child and got inside the freezer and did not survive. Hmm. You know, um, hitting schools and so forth i'm sure they're i don't know what they'll do next with schools around these storms but i'm sure they'll end up building some storm shelters in them. well it was interesting one of the schools there had a storm shelter that had been built um 40 years ago that yeah. was underground right and uh the community was invited in there and 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 that one the school building around it is gone but uh shelter. after the 50 or 60 people that were in that shelter were all... But you know, uh, this Village Green Town Center here is the storm shelter. That's right. And, uh, Lord, it was built... Uh, for uh, for a, a nuclear holocaust. Right. Yeah. Built. And yeah. if you remember that bowling alley, that's a you're pretty far down under the ground. Oh, you're, <laughs> yeah, under very there. much under the ground. I do remember. I don't know if the, you may still have them here, but I remember as a kid there were uh, barrels of water with radioactive signs mm. on the side of them that were stored down here for emergencies in case we had now, a now the water's not here i can tell you that but there is a well downstairs <laughs> is there, oh, yeah. is there a well in that as well wow. oh yeah a lot of people didn't know that but when they built the uh, village originally they were putting the bowling alley downstairs and they hit a spring and uh, uh that spring is constantly running now it's pumped it's pumped out of there mm. but uh, is it part of the Taylor Springs up here that is the fountain of Cleveland? I wouldn't I mean, it's it. only two blocks from here. I, you, I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, yeah. you know, that uh, there's this thing, is uh, it's a rock bed 
around here the whole parking lot is and everything so i'm sure there's some springs around it's probably coming coming from there I, I tell you, Steve, there's another thing about this storm, and, and you ought to think about it at least. Um, they have absolutely no power out there. The oh, only yeah. power is the news organizations have brought some generators out, mm -hmm. and the city uh, has some generators. But the point is, at night, it's pitch black. So when we get into these debates and you ask who needs an assault rifle with a high-capacity clip, who needs a gun, if I'm living out there, and I don't have a wall up around me anymore, mm. and it's pitch black at night, and I'm a, a responsible parent who feels like he needs to be able to protect his family, that's who needs a gun. Good point. Well. Now, Franklin, you'd use your BB gun, just sting them, wouldn't you? Uh, uh, well, I might, I might <laughs> use the 9 millimeter I have, but, but there's a lot of issues that come out of that. I, I saw stories yesterday. Um, uh, kind of ironic i guess at least some people would think so both the united states senators from oklahoma uh, voted against sandy relief uh, I, I hope that that doesn't come back to bite them because i certainly hope those people get the relief that they need and i, I don't think anybody can do that other than the federal government they can, there's no way to do that mm -hmm. no state has the ability to pay for something like that well when they say sandy relief though they didn't vote against sending federal assets in to help whether it's the national guard or things like that they voted against actual money being given and there were there were reasons that they felt like you know I matter of fact i understand the reasons they gave but sandy is no different than any other federal disaster there's just no way that can be done without an influx of federal dollars well we've had presidents in the past that have actually been against that for for actual uh, philosophical reasons that they thought it was unconstitutional so there's a lot of questions there what what president was that uh, frankly i don't remember i'll look it up for okay. you if you want <laughs> let me ask you something you think um, you know uh, mr obama's got uh, all these investigations going on in the government or let me say not mr obama i don't guess they're directly against mr obama it's just investigations going on you know we've got what the irs benghazi the ap Fox News scandal. I don't know what else. Actually, you got to throw the EPA, EPA in there now, too, because they've found out that they've targeted conservative groups as well. Okay, EPA. Yeah, we got all these scandals in there. Do you think that uh, with this storm out there, and, and I'm not trying to take away from the, the, the harshness of the storm, whatever happened, but do you think that Mr. Uh, the president's staff and the president are fortunate that they have something else taking up the news media time than following up on these uh, investigations. Opinions. Well, I think storms like this are reminders from time to time that there are bigger issues than some of the things we tend to quibble about in Washington. I saw that was a point actually made by a Republican congressman who was being interviewed last night that uh, he had just gotten off the phone with the president for example, and, uh, uh, you know, he and the president had discussed the fact that they disagreed about a lot of things, but there are a lot of things that draw us together as Americans, and that sometimes we tend to lose focus on those things. And, and sometimes, unfortunately, it takes national tragedies to remind us. Well, I think they're completely unrelated. I, I think that, obviously, on a practical level, the news coverage of this will... Uh, absorb a lot of the time on the air which is probably good for the president trying to weather these scandals um, but it has nothing to do with the validity of the scandals and the fact that the IRS the most powerful arm and most intrusive arm of the federal government has been shown to be acting with a political agenda targeting American citizens and this administration and and they were very slick you know, they may have completely insulated the president from uh, actual decisions, but at some point, the preponderance of the of the evidence and the just complete uh, pile up of coincidence uh, starts to really affect uh, the way you look at this administration. Well, it'll be interesting to see if the facts that came out yesterday are actually going to get any attention. Turns out that the chairman of the House Oversight Committee, Daryl Issa, a Republican, knew about this investigation going on nine months ago, and he had been receiving regular updates on it. So he didn't You're talking feel about the IRS? Yeah, yeah. So what you're saying is the chairman of the committee was better informed than the president of the United States? 
Yeah. Because the Franklin, IRS. That doesn't scare you to death? The president of the United States had no better information than I did sitting on, on my couch watching TV? See, that's what's bothersome about this, Fra Franklin. The explanation is he didn't know. Well, guess what? That no, scares me to death. The explanation is that she Republicans were much. aware of this who had an oversight responsibility, and they made a decision to not do anything until the investigation was farther along, which is what I've been urging people to do all along, too. Which one? That's a, which investigation? Which investigation? Both of them. Well, well, not both of them. There's, there's probably five or six going on right now. There's always five or six investigations going on in Washington. There's never a Frankly, time you that have the happen. woman that was in charge of this is going to invoke her Fifth Amendment right not to testify because of self-incrimination today. Uh -huh. The woman who have, is she the same one that they've now put in charge of Obamacare? That woman, no. Learners, not. No. Oh, and by the way, the reason she stated her lawyer stated she did that is because the a member of the committee she was going to testify to said in a public hearing he wanted to know who was going to go to jail for this before she got there to testify. So what? So I she want said, to know well, wait a minute. Franklin, guess approach, what? I'm not coming to testify. I want to know. Well, Franklin, if she didn't do anything well, wrong. Well, that's your constitutional right, But the point it? is, if she didn't do anything wrong, then she has no risk whatsoever of going to jail, does she? I didn't say she didn't do anything wrong. I'm just saying the reason she invoked her Fifth Amendment rights well, is because they started the, up. These things are piling up. That's what I do, All of these things are piling up. For example, the press uh, has oh, sent some press that. people to the Cincinnati office of the IRS to interview some of the workers over there. They were met by an armed federal guard who walked them through the entire facility, stayed with them the entire time. Now, this isn't Fox News. This is the, the what you would call the other news agencies. They said if the intent wasn't to frighten the IRS agents from talking to us, that was certainly the effect. This is bad. And this, the, when Jay Carney comes out and every day has to correct what he said the day before, <laughs> There's a real problem here. Jay Carney hasn't had to correct Franklin, anything about last the IRS. Week, last week, yes, he has. No, last he hasn't. week, and last hold on, and hold on, but let's stop right now. Here's what the President of the United States said: This is outrageous. It should not happen, and people have to be held accountable. Right. That's the president's statement. Right. Don't tell me about Jay Carney. Jay Carney we speaks the for the top. president. Well, the president spoke well, for himself. All right, let me, Do you let disagree me. with him? Oh, I, I'm sure he said exactly what... Do you what, agree with that? I agree that he you said that. You agree with the president? I agree that he said so that. So now we're going to talk about what the president... No, what I'm going to say is this happened on his watch, Franklin. When is this okay. man responsible for anything? Who said they're not responsible? He did. No, he didn't. They, their ex explanation is, well, nobody notified the president. Now, okay. Here, well, Franklin, here's the problem. Jay Carney, you said he didn't have to correct anything. Last week, he said... Now, they first said nobody in the White House knew about the investigation. That was their first statement about two weeks ago. Then they came back and said, well, yes, actually, the White House legal no, counsel. Franklin, their, their let me finish. Their was, was that the president learned about no, it on a specific day. No, the first statement that Jay Carney said was no one at the White House knew. Then he had to come back a day or so later and say, well, the White House counsel knew, but no one else knew. And if you listen to the president's press conference, when he was directly asked, did anyone in the White House White House know, he dodged that question by saying, I certainly didn't know about the Inspector General's report. That wasn't the question that he was asked. He stated the specific day. He gave a lawyerly answer and said, I didn't know. But that wasn't the question. The question was, did anybody in the White House know? Then Jay Carney has to come out and say, well, actually, the White House counsel knew, and they notified the, uh, I think, one he, of the deputies, and then they notified the chief of staff. The White House chief of staff knew, but, and this is Jay Carney's words, they didn't think it was important to tell the president. Now, you've got the IRS targeting individuals going on, and they didn't think that was appropriate to tell the president of the United States? Except that the, the time periods that you're talking about, John, are a period of about three weeks. So? They no, still no, lie. No, Jay Carney no, this lied. investigation has apparently been going on for many, many months. You're, you're fussing and going apoplectic over whether well, they learned it three Franklin, weeks earlier. My point is not whether they learned it. My point is the guy can't tell the truth. The point is the president came out and said the day he learned it. 
He told the exact day he learned about it. Frankly, do you believe that? Do you? Is Why Jay, would I believe it? What, Jay Carney comes out every day and speaks for the president. When that man can't tell a straight answer, it affects the way everybody feels about the president and the entire administration. Tell me why Jay Carney couldn't get his facts straight. I don't know that he did. Well, it's Frankly, probably he, because I just gave I you a list did. of corrections that he gave day after every day. His story changed. What about Miss Rice when she went around with her facts? Well, now actually, and now we know that what she said was exactly <laughs> correct. That is not true. She no. got no, 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 no. Here, let's let's talk about that. We now know, without any question, there's not even a shred of doubt about it. Oh, they it, handed her these papers. It was who, the movie that started. Who it? handed them to her? Guess the, what? We don't know because they won't identify. Oh, that. they have identified who, them. Who handed them to her? They were released by the State Department. But the State Department. This is supposed to be a, 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 a intelligence document. What was the State it, Department what doing? What those with it? emails show, which they finally ca came out, thankfully. Shows that exactly what she said happened happened. Where was she the got video those talking mentioned. points where and she the used video, them. Where was the video mentioned in any of the talking points? Which video? The video she talked about. You mean the video? The video. The of, video of the supposed uh, the insult writing. to Islam. The, where the was writing. that they video mentioned in anything? It was mentioned in. No, it was not. They mentioned that there was a disruption in Egypt, and that's it. The video, that was being reported all over the, the news. The video yeah. was not, actually Franklin. The White House is who broke the story on the video, and the video is not in any of the talking points. So tell me where the video came from. News reports. No news reports. The news reports were of the White House's no, announcement. They were not. Franklin, nobody knew about the video until the White House put it out. John, there were stories all over the press about that. Franklin, the stories came from the administration. And nowhere in the in the CIA's talking points in the John, are you telling me I'm that telling there weren't protests at these the other embassies over lied. this video? We've, wait a minute, we've got so many things we're talking about. I think we're getting lost. Well, let me, we got let me the add IRS, something. Benghazi, the AP. There's the a Fox new News report. Channel, there's the a EPA. new there's new uh, whistleblowers that are supposedly coming forward. Supposedly, supposedly. Uh, Franklin. That's guess like what? your last supposedly. Yeah, it's like the Tea Party they people. All turn it's out like to be the wrong. Tea Party people who weren't being persecuted. They all right? turn out to be wrong. The ten full Tea Party people. People that Every were proven time you bring exactly this stuff correct. up, a couple of months go by, and then we discover that what you were saying well, turned out to be false. Apparently, what was going on is the State Department sold Stinger missiles to the rebels in uh, Libya, and it turned out they actually sold them to Al Qaeda. And Stevens was in Benghazi to buy back the Stinger missiles. That's that's the newest information that's out. And we already know that it was a CIA black site, and that was one of the reasons they were covering it up. What's going on with uh, Senator Corker's investigation of, uh, of, of a lot of money being spent in Afga Afghanistan over the last few years? Have you heard anything there? I not. Okay. I just caught something about that. There's something fixing to come out about all that. Yeah. I mean, we're on, we're on that subject, but I'm going to go back to it again. It is Senator Corker who's been quoted in the last two weeks saying he saw all these emails and he doesn't think there's anything there. That's our senator. Now, wait a minute. Let, let's, let's talk about which emails which we're emails? talking yeah, about. He said he saw all of them, what, the ones what, we've been talking uh, about the last Referring two to? The Benghazi ones. Okay, the Benghazi ones. And he right. doesn't think there's anything there. That's what he said. What about the order to stand down? He didn't have anything to do with that. I'm sure he didn't get an email on that. What What's come out about that is that the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff has said we do not did not have the ability to get anyone there in time to well, do something about this. There's plenty of opinion on that. Donald Rumsfeld came out just yesterday and said he felt like there was plenty of capability. And the the so what is it? The African commander supposedly had a had a crew ready to go and was ordered not to. He was going to send them anyway, and they sent word that the the State Department sent word that if he did it, he would be demoted and removed. Bob, from, Bob from Gates, position. the Defense Secretary, uh, that just resigned about a year ago said there is no way we don't have teams that we put into places like that without knowing what they're going to encounter when they get there Frankly, that's you don't ridiculous. put them at that you know what? Absolutely we could have flown, we could have flown a jet over you know what and, that, and they addressed that question too right. it turns out that in the civil war over libya that there's all kinds of uh, ground guess what stinger missiles that we sold to them thanks franklin
We couldn't fly a jet over because we had sold Not the ones we sold, John. The ones we lost control of in a civil war. You understand? Lost control Libya had an army. They had a, they had all these weapons. They didn't have Stinger missiles. Yeah, they did. Franklin, here's here's a real big question for you. Jeez, and I, I John, tried to pr- I, mean, I tried on. to present this to you last last week. If you walk by a big huge river and you see a child drowning in the middle of the river and you look at the child and you say, "You know what? The river's really strong. I don't think I can swim out there and, and get to her in time." So I'm not going to try. Is that acceptable, or do people the, the, dive in the, the river and do the best they can? The best argument you've come up with in all this process is is that we should have flown a jet there. No, I and think we should have sent people in. Off. It went on for eight hours. There were people less no, than an hour away. No, it was not away. an eight-hour battle. That's another myth you keep talking about. Franklin, it didn't the, happen the that The Pentagon way. came out last no, week and said, had they known that it was going to go on as long as it did, they could have sent assets in. And it there was is not a story. A continuous eight hour the, battle. That's I don't give a, a damn how what continuous, no. non continuous American here. citizens were on no. the ground in harm's way. And this president, this administration did nothing. Hey, I think I can summarize this. Uh, we're guilty of doing nothing. End the story. I mean, that's what happened. We didn't do a thing to try to save them. Uh, let's change the subject a little bit. Uh, Ten care. Do you think we need ten care expanded in Tennessee as our new health care? It's interesting. There's an interesting story in the paper this morning. You right. probably saw it. Uh, they've done polls of all the southern states that have opted out of the ten care expansion so far. Every one of those states, uh, numbers of sixty percent or more, favor the ten care expansion. What's all in, also interesting about this? Uh, it really is tells us a lot about how people think. All these states favored health exchanges being set up by 70% or more, tax credits for the uninsured to buy coverage, again, almost 70% each state. Those are all the three main parts of Obamacare, but in all those states, only 33% favor Obamacare. (laughs) So it tells us a little bit about people's understanding uh, of the issues involved. But Tennessee was one of them also. Uh, 60-something percent surveyed. Favored the expansion. That here. was a Vanderbilt survey. Right, Eight hundred some problem people. Is, frankly, you're right. They have a very poor understanding. But why would you accept part of their understanding in a survey and criticize I, another part of their understanding? If, if I did a survey and said, "How do you feel about Lamborghinis being given to uh, 25-year-old U.S. citizens?" I'm thinking 80, 90 percent of the people go, "I think it'd be great to give Lamborghinis to 25-year-olds." The problem is we can't afford it. When you ask an open-ended question. And how do you feel about this service being done for you? People say, sure, I like that. The problem is we can't afford it. Your own, you know, Democratic Governor Bredesen kicked, what was it, 180,000 people off the 10 care rolls years ago because it was going to bankrupt the state of Tennessee. I'm reading here Governor Haslam has uh, rejected the Medicaid expansion, which would cover an estimated 181,000 poor uh, Tennesseans uh, with the federal government picking up the entire cost for the first two years before gradually scaling it share down to 90 percent but the 90 percent is not a guarantee for the rest of the life that's right that's right that's the problem you know how it works we fussed on a local level the the county commission will take a grant a three-year grant to hire a new sheriff's deputy right well that's great for the three years but in the end of three years guess what you You got to pay for that you better know where that money's going to come that's exactly right the government, uh, the well, governor is that you're already paying for. It. That's the, the part that you, everybody just. Well, you had a grant over. for the money. Actually, that's no, not true either. No, you're paying for frankly. it in indigent care. Unless, of course, this this new system forces even a higher usage rate. Uh, matter of fact, there was a study just last week that showed this kind of coverage. Not only did it not decrease the number of trips people made to the ER, which was one of the main selling points that oh, all these people are going to the ER, and if we got this kind of program, it'll cut down on that. It actually increased the number of people going to the ER. Well, the, the governor's trying to work a deal with the federal officials in which the state could use the federal money essentially to buy lower income residents onto a federally operated health insurance exchange where they could find private insurance that's his go what he's trying to accomplish anything you could make more private i'm for you know uh 10 care it was a terrible model it's uh, it, 
you know, I told you this story once before when I was uh, trying to uh, get involved in finding the fraud in ten care, where you had people from Arkansas and everywhere else coming over and signing up on the ten care program over here. And you know, I we were in the credit and collection business at the time, and basically we had a service where we could go verify these addresses and 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 get to the bottom of it to make sure they were Tennessee residents and so forth. And everywhere I went, I, I, I hit a blank wall because basically all these uh, people that were handling the 10 care in the different sectors were getting paid on a per diem. <clears throat> they were getting so much for every head they had registered with them. It didn't matter whether they could provide service or not. That, they didn't want to get rid of any of them. Well, they I can tell you another thing. The, the, the 10 care program was fraudulent in its beginning. Uh, they put it together, and it was actually put together with, with input from Hillary uh, because it was her model for national health care. My grandfather had been out of his office for over nine years, I believe, when TenCare came along. He was still listed on the waiver form that the state sent in for a provider for Blue Cross Blue Shield. So because the, the Donna Shalala, Health and Human Services Secretary, required a certain level of coverage by medical doctors. So my grandfather, who'd been dead seven years, out of the office nine years, was turned in as a provider. We had another doctor in town that had had his medical license removed and had moved out of town. He was turned in as a provider. So they were fraudulent at the outset of that program. I've uh, heard through the grapevine that we've got a doctor here in town that's been uh, investigated right now for Medicaid fraud. Does anybody know anything about there that? Was, I don't know. There's a story yesterday uh, they had seized $6.9 million out of an account. Mm -hmm. I, I will tell you, as a you know, health care provider, small business, I can't even fathom those, those kind of numbers. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know what kind of business you I mean, that's not a typical medical office, I can tell you. <laughs> that's a lot of money, isn't it? Um, it? It sounds like a tremendous amount of money to yeah. me. Uh, the U.S. government on Sunday reached its borrowing limit again of $16.4 trillion. Uh, borrowing limit. What, what, what's going to happen here? We're going to be downgraded if they don't work a deal out. What do you think the deal's going to be? Depends on who you're talking to. There's a group of, of uh, senators, um, bipartisan as I understand it, who've been trying to work on this so-called grand bargain. Um, uh, whether they make any progress or not, I don't know. You know, it's hard for me to understand why, uh, you know, you've got $16.4 trillion, and um, you run through that, and it's like running up here at the bank and say, hey, I need another couple trillion get me by for a while well that's not it at all it doesn't authorize additional spending uh, i mean that's what they're after the point <laughs> is that the spending by the federal government really in the last five years has just skyrocketed and you would think you know mm -hmm. it's like verizon if your child is on verizon and every month you get that over usage notification that they're using too much time what do you do and most people would go back to the child and say you need to cut back on your usage right the federal or, government are you going to get this phone yeah. taken away from? Right. Or the federal government doesn't do that. They just where do we get some more money? I tell you something. I saw it's kind of weird in the uh, news. That, what's the girl's names over at Homeland Security? Napolitano. Yeah, uh, she was headed into one of these uh, in uh, oh the storm uh, deal. The the head of Homeland Security was going down there to the uh, storm deal. Now, what was the purpose of the head of Homeland Security going to where the storm is? There's a working relationship between Homeland Security and FEMA. I mean, I just don't understand why Homeland... I thought Homeland Security was to guard our airports and guard our borders. No, actually, they did. They combined a bunch of departments yeah. in one. So they, they, it's a little bit scary. They actually have a lot of authority. They have too much authority. I mean, well, I the idea is that in the past, and I'm not defending because I tend to agree with you, Steve, but the idea was that you had all these departments, they had poor communication among them, and they couldn't coordinate a response. So we'll create one department that can coordinate a response. Called Homeland Security. The problem is what response does, do they coordinate? That's right. All right, we're going to take a break, and we'll be back in just a few minutes. You're listening to Backfire with Steve Hickson. We'll be right back after this.
You are listening to WOOPLP, Cleveland, Tennessee. Whoop FM is a broadcasting service of the Traditional Music Resource Center, and we play America's original music. Check into check in the cash. We'll beat any rates that don't pay the match. Check into cash gives you more money for your title and the lowest title loan rate anywhere. We'll beat any rate on a title loan and we guarantee it. So you'll save money. If you already have a title loan, ask Check into Cash about paying it off. So if you're short on cash, think Check into Cash. No credit check, no run around. Check into Cash won't slow you down. Check into Cash, your one-stop money shop for 20 years. Now offering payday loans without a check. Great service, convenience, and locations. Check into, check into Cash. Whoa, 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 whoa. We'll beat any rates that don't pay the max. Oh, yeah. Check into Cash is your money machine. Get on up and get down. Check into Cash. Bring proof of lower rate on similar title loan. Use payday advances responsibly. Visit checkintocash.com for the store nearest you. When you buy or sell or pawn, you can't go wrong at U.S. Money Shops. When money's tight, you'll be all right. Cause leaves inside at U.S. Money Shops. Hey, Glenn here from U.S. Money Shops. If you're looking for extra cash, whether it's $50, $500, or even $50,000, then U.S. Money Shops just may be the place for you. We're a pawn shop like no other. Buy, sell, pawn, we do it all. Pawn with us. We'll earn your trust. Sell to us. Without any fuss. Buy from us. You can rely on us. U.S. Money Shops offers the best selection of electronics, tools, firearms, jewelry, and more. You name it, we got it. So when you need cash or want a deal, visit U.S. Money Shops, the best pawn shop in town. And remember, we cash all checks and buy gift cards. Now with several locations to serve you. Visit U.S. Money Shops today for the best deal around. Buy yourself or pawn today. The better way of U.S. Money Shops. Visit USMoneyShops.com for the store nearest you. The Plastic Surgery Clinic of Cleveland offers a variety of cosmetic solutions to help you achieve your personal goals. Whether it's Botox injections, liposuction, a tummy tuck, or breast reconstruction, Dr. Michael Hoops, Cleveland's only full-time board-certified plastic surgeon, will sit down and discuss your desired